guys, welcome to Splash Studio Online. My name is Jessie. I'm going to be teaching you this painting here called Hop City. It's a fun kind of take on a city silhouette painting but with some Wisconsin themed elements in the background here. Um, so that being said guys, um, this is a video so whenever you um, feel like you need to pause it, take a break, let your paint dry, uh, or work on something, um, feel free to pause the video and then whenever you want to get started again just resume and we can get back into it. So that being said guys, we've got a couple of supplies here I'd like to go over with you. You should have a, a roll of four brushes here with four different types of brushes. You've got your large flat brush, your medium flat brush, your medium round brush, and your tiny detail brush. We're going to be using all of those throughout our painting and I'll be letting you know which one we're going to be using. On top of that, we've also got this nice water cup. This is great for kind of putting your brushes in when you're not using them um, so that they don't dry out. It's a nice little home for them. It's also great for washing off your brushes in between colors. And then lastly, we've got this handy dandy little rag. This is great for drying off your brushes once you have washed them. So with all of that, we are gonna start off in this painting with the background. You can see there's a lot of blue going on in the sky, in the water, and that's what we're gonna be doing first. So I am going to take my largest flat brush, so this big guy, and I'm gonna be mixing up mostly white with a little bit of blue. What we're gonna do is paint a horizon line towards the bottom of our canvas where our water is going to meet our sky. So I would say about, for this one I would say about an inch and a half, maybe relatively. It doesn't like super duper matter where it is, but it's gonna be lower on the canvas. I'm just gonna paint this line here. Get a little bit more white in there, baby. Once you've got that in there, we are also going to be painting kind of a radial gradient here, so it looks like the light is kind of radiating outwards. So we're going to start with the same color. I'm doing kind of a, a half circle here in the center of this light blue. And you can also kind of just blend it into that horizon line we made, kind of smooth it all out. And once you have done that guys, we're going to be adding a little bit more blue as we go upwards and outwards. So I'll just add a little bit more blue to that mixture. And I will begin to just drag this color across, kind of blend it into that previous color, but it forms a nice gradient. I'm just going back and forth across the boundary where these two colors meet so that they blend very nicely. I'm bringing that color up a little bit more. If you're finding that your colors aren't spreading super well, feel free to add some water to your paint. This will help it kind of go across the canvas a little bit better. And just keep adding more blue to your colors as you go up. Continuing to blend that in to your previous color. And from here, I'm just gonna dip into straight blue. We can start to get some darker blues up in this sky. I'm still blending those colors together here. And then lastly, I'm just going to add a little bit of red to some blue so that I can get a kind of violet mixture. Just to finish off that sky. Still making sure that I'm blending those colors together. And 
there you have it. There is your sky all done. So once you've got that done, we're going to move on down to our water here. I'm still going to use my, uh, my large flat brush, but I'm just going to wash it off so I can start over. We're going to start again with um, kind of a blue and white mixture, not quite as light as this uh, middle part here, but I am going to mix some blue and white about equal measure together. So we still want it to be darker than this so it can show up and have some nice contrast. I'm just going to start by covering this entire thing in that color, making sure I get a nice line in our horizon. Alright, and now that we have that, we're going to add some shadows here, so I'm going to get some pure blue and just add this to each. Right? And then lastly, we'll add a bit more shadow in the same kind of color that we used for the top of our sky by adding a little bit of red to our blue and getting a violet mixture. There we go. Now that we've got our sky and our water taken care of, we can go ahead and add one last little step before taking our first break, and that is just some stars here that you can see in the top of our sky. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my detail brush. Now instead of using the brush side end, I like to use the handle side for our stars, just kind of creates a nice little point. So I'm gonna dip this into white and just dot this all over my sky. Kind of creates a nice little perfect dot of white there. Now it's up to you how many or how little stars you want to add, how big, how small. If you want there to be a lot, I like to add a lot of stars, but that's just me. I'm just dotting these all over. I try to make them look as random as possible. So I'll try to like cluster some together, space them apart. Um, but the general rule is that we're going to have less stars as we go down just because um, the night sky you can always see them better as opposed to the lighter sky. Alright, now that you've got your stars in there guys, we're going to be taking a little break just to let this all dry. So go ahead, pause the video whenever you're ready. Um, let your painting dry for about uh, five to ten minutes, however long it takes, and then when you're ready to jump back into it, you can just unpause the video. Alrighty guys, so once your sky and your water and all that stuff is completely dried, we're going to move on to these bigger buildings in the background here. We're going to start with the keg, and that is mostly uh, grays. So I'm going to grab my medium flat brush here. And this is kind of a darker gray, so I'm gonna grab um, kind of equal parts, black and white. Kind of mixing the colors around until I get a shade that I like. That looks good. So I've got my dark gray right there. Now to start with this, it's just kind of like a tall, rounded rectangle is how I would probably describe it. So I'm gonna start with where I kind of want to place it. So let's say, make a line there. For that's, that's where I want it to be, and that's essentially kind of how tall I want it to be, maybe a little taller. There we go. So that is kind of where I want it. And then don't worry about where it meets the horizon line. It doesn't have to be perfect when you build it in, uh, just because we are gonna be adding all these other buildings as well as this kind of shoreline, tree line thing, what have you. So, once you've got your placement there, we're just going to kind of build it out. So I'm going to make a line on top for how wide I want it to be. I'm going to just kind of round those corners out and bring it straight down. Once you've gotten that, you can just go ahead and fill that whole thing in. Basic shape of 
our keg building. Um, and now we're gonna add the kind of lighter gray rings around it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a bit more white into that gray mixture to make it lighter, just a lighter gray. We're just going to go ahead and start with this circle that's on top here. We're just going to go around and just like that. Now since these colors are still wet, if you do get a little bit of blending going on there, that is a-okay. I'm just going to go ahead and touch that up. Make sure that you can tell that those are two different shades of gray there. Alrighty. And then it's got uh, a ring up here and then one farther down here. You can't see quite all of it, but it is poking out behind these other buildings. We want to make sure that that is there. So if this is just a curved line on the top and then towards the bottom. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Just an arc across the center. And then I'll make some areas where they kind of poke out of the body, of the barrel, keg, whatever you wanna call it. And there's one. And then we're just gonna do another one closer to the bottom. you have the basic shape of your keg. We're going to pause here for a little bit so that we can let this dry before we go on to our other building. So get ready um, to take a break, pause the video, um, let this dry, and then whenever you're ready to come back, just unpause the video. Alrighty guys, so once this is all nice and in there and dry, we're going to move on to our beer bottles in our cityscape there. So there is three of them and they're fairly large. If you do want to do something else, you're going to do like wine bottles or if you want to do like a different like a specific type of beer label go for it um what i'm just going to be following along with what the painting has here and so to sketch these out i'm actually going to switch to my medium round brush since they are kind of fairly um intricate shapes and we're going to be using a dark brown to start with this so i'm going to grab i've got my brown right here and i'm going to grab a little bit of blue and kind of mix that in with my brown to get a darker Darker brown. I'm gonna need to be a little color that I like. There we go. So I've got my dark brown right there next to my regular brown. And what I'm gonna do is kind of the same thing that we did with the keg, where we want to kind of just figure out where to place them first. So I'll start with this largest one that's off to the left side of our keg, and I'll just kind of make a straight line where I want that one to be. So there is my first one. And then there's one directly next to it. Another straight line, slightly shorter. And then there is also one to the right here that is a, just a little bit taller than the keg. There we go. So that is where my beer bottles are gonna be. And then we're gonna start with the kind of top of it. It's kind of a square or a rectangle on top of each of these. So I'm just gonna sketch that on top of my lines that I've made for each of them. Alright, and once we've got that, we're going to move down to the neck. Now the neck is just a little bit thicker than the line that we've just made, so I'm just going to thicken that up, but I want to make sure that it isn't any thicker than that top part that we just made, and it only goes down about two inches or so, so I'll stop there.
And we've got the necks in there. We're just gonna start to kind of gradually slope them outwards and then bring them down for the body. So I'll start on this tallest one. Just starting to slope those lines outwards. And then just bring them straight down. And just like with the keg, you don't really have to worry about where um, the beer bottle meets the horizon because we, be, we, will, we will be going in later with other city skylines here and then that tree line to kind of fix that all up so it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm just going to do that for all of my other bottles as well. And if your bottle on this side does go off of the canvas, that is not an issue. And if they do overlap, that is okay as well. You'll just have to think about which one is in front and which one is in back and we'll kind of, I'll help you differentiate those um, when we get to the details on the mirror bottle. Now that I have those beer bottles, we're going to wait for them to dry real quick, just about a 5 or 10 minute break, and then we're going to come back and add some more details as well. So take a break, 5-10 minutes, just pause this video, and then when you're ready to come back in, you just can just start playing again. Hey guys, so now that our beer bottles and all of that detail is dry, we're going to go in and add our labels to our bottles. So for this guys, you can use whatever colors, whatever um, labels you like. If you have a specific label in mind that you want to uh, create, absolutely go for it. I'm just going to use these simple colors and shapes that we have here on our original painting. So for that, I am going to grab my medium brown brush. And we're going to start with this one off to the far left. It's kind of a red maroon color. Now, since I've got a brown on there already, um, I don't have to mix anything to my red. It'll just go over and make it look like a darker red. So I'm just going to grab pure red. And again, since this bottle is being overlapped by this front one, I'm going to start where I put that regular brown and I'm just going to make a line there. And then I'm just going to wrap that label around the bottle a little bit before ending it. I'm just making it essentially a short little rectangle. And then they've also got bottles or labels on the neck, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make a band of red around the neck. So there's your first label. I'm gonna go ahead and wash my brush off. The second one is a light green, so what I'm gonna do is mix together a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow, and then some blue to get a light green. There I have my light green. So now I'm gonna go ahead, mine might be a little bit lighter than the original, so I'm gonna mix just a little bit more blue in there, maybe a little more yellow. There we go. So now it's the same idea, it's just a label that is curved around the bottle just a little bit and then stops so you can see the edge of it. And I like to curve those edges just a little bit so it does look like they are wrapping around the bottle. So they're following the shape of the bottle. And I'll fill that in. And then same deal with the neck. I'm just going to make a band of green around the neck for that other label. And there you go. There is our second label. I'm going to go ahead and wash my brush off one more time. And for this last label, it is a kind of a light orange color. So I'm going to grab 
some white and some orange mix them together I got my light orange right there and we're just gonna do the same thing except this time the label is facing on the opposite side of the bottle so I'll just start on this side and curve that label around and then come back And then, one more band around the neck. There we go. There you have all of your labels. Now that we have that, we're going to start to add the details to our labels, like the highlights around the edges, as well as the shapes in the middle. So I'm going to go back to my little detail brush. And then I'm going to dip into pure white. We'll go back to my uh, first one that I did to give these two a chance to dry. And I'm just going to go ahead and outline that label in white. And I'm not going to outline this side of it because I want to make sure that it still looks like it's being overlapped by that front bottle. Alright, we've got our highlights on, so now we're going to go in and make our Labels. So this one is pretty simple. It's just kind of a strange little zigzag. With a, another line box around it. And then for this light green one, it looks like this line goes down. And then it's got this strange kind of clover shape in the middle. goes down and another line. Maybe an IPA could be. You decide what kind of labels you guys want. And then the last one looks like just kind of a semicircle that is being cut off by our other beer bottle. So that's pretty simple. So there you have your labels for your beer bottles. So we're going to take another little short break, 5-10 minutes, just to let this all dry before we start to go in with our cityscape. Alrighty guys, once your first city silhouette is all dry, we're going to be working on our second one. And this one is kind of a lighter gray, a similar shade to the lighter parts of our keg here. So I'm going to grab my medium flat brush once more. And we're just going to be making a lighter gray, just like we did for our keg here. So you're going to be making this cityscape much in the same way we did the first one, only it's just going to be a little bit shorter, squatter, that kind of thing. So I'll be doing much the same technique that I was doing before, so you guys can feel free to follow along or come up with your own um, second layer of buildings if you want. And don't feel, um, don't hesitate to kind of overlap. You can see that there's a space here and that the first line of building just kind of overlaps that. So don't be afraid to kind of overlap your buildings in some areas. So that is our second layer of buildings. Now what we're going to do is go back and kind of outline both of those in a lighter gray. Now it just has to be a little bit lighter than this front row of buildings that we made. So I'm going to add a little bit more white to that gray that we had to get a really light gray. And I'll outline our first row of buildings first, and then I'll go back and outline um, the ones we did before. So that's just a really quick outline, it doesn't have to be super precise, just to give them a, another kind of level of dimension. And 
Alright, and then I will go and do the same thing for our back row buildings. Just kind of outline them in this lighter gray color. Alright, so now we've got all of our buildings outlined. We can go in and add all of these city lights here that we've got. I'm just going to wash off my detail brush and we can dip it in pure white. Now similar to the stars that we did um, in the sky, if you look at the dots on the building, those lights, you can also use the back of your brush for those little dots. Um, but I'm first going to go in with some of these lines, so I'm going to use my actual brush end for that. So you can just use a series of dashes and dots for your cityscape in whatever pattern that you would like. We've got all of our city lights and all of that in there. We're going to take another short break just to let this all dry before going in with our last couple of details. Hey guys, so for our last couple of steps, we're going to work on this kind of tree line or shoreline that we've got going between our buildings and our um, water here just to make it a little bit more of a nice transition. So I'm going to grab my medium round brush here, this little guy. We're gonna make up our own green um, once again. So I'm gonna get a little bit of yellow, and mix it in with some blue. And there we have our green here, right there. And so for this, we're just gonna go along the shoreline and make um, some textured strokes and I don't want to go too high up or else I won't, I won't be able to see those gray buildings. So I'm just going to go kind of a little bit up in some areas and then down and kind of just make a textured kind of brushy line covering that line where our buildings and our water meet. Once I've got that green line in, we're just going to add another layer of a lighter green. So I'm going to mix the lighter green in here by just adding white to that yellow and blue mixture that I just made. And then I'm just going to overlap that darker green with this lighter green, making sure I leave a little bit at the top where I can still see it. Alright, so we've just got one more layer to do. And that is just pure brown. Now we do want to make sure that this dries just a little bit, so we're going to take our very last break and just let this dry for about five minutes, and then we'll come back and do our last step. Alrighty guys, so our last step here is going to be that, just that one little streak of brown. So I'm going to grab my medium round brush once more. Now that this is dry, it should be able to get that brown on there without any weird blending with the green. So I'm just going to grab some pure brown. And this is just going to be a really thin textured line because we want to still be able to see that light green um, that we made there before. So I'm just going to go in, dab this color on that border between the blue and the light green. Get a nice little shoreline in there. Alrighty guys, now that our shoreline is finished, that is the last step I have for you. So you guys have finished this painting, Hop City, for yourselves. Now the very last thing you guys can do is just add your signature, and that is just going to be a dip in some black paint, and put your initials in that bottom corner. But that is all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for joining us here at Splash Studio Online. We would love to see these creations that you guys have made in your own home. So feel free to post these pictures on Facebook, Instagram, and tag us so that we can see all of them. Um, again, hope you guys are staying safe and healthy out there. And thanks for joining us at Splash Studio Online, and I hope to see you on the next one.